Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening to God's most beautiful creation. Here we are on this beautiful evening. Out here to give God some glory. Here at Warriors on a Mission. This is what it's about. It's not about any kind of publicity or anything. It's all about giving God glory and sending a word out from God to his people. And so this evening, God has given us a word. Uh, and you may see me with my sunglasses on. It's because of where I'm sitting. I'm directly into the sun. It's not to try to make myself look cool in any way because it's not about me. But if I was to take my glasses off, I would be squinting very, very difficultly. So anyway, uh, again, just to give a little update on that. But God has given us a word this evening. And it is a powerful word. And I thank God for it because oftentimes we need these things to... to to remind us of what God is doing, what he's allowed us to have. You know, this week we're celebrating a very important week um, from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday. This week alone, many people pay attention to it. And we know that God, you know, that Jesus was riding into, riding down the road, riding a donkey. Excuse me, not riding down the road, but riding a donkey into, you know, what I must say would be... Uh, riding into a place to where you and I would finally get a chance to get back to him. You know, if, if, if you know the story of it all, which I'm pretty sure most of you do, this is the week that is celebrated to Jesus was riding in and giving to go to the cross. And on the cross, which, you know, we celebrated as him going in on Friday evening. And he passed on the cross uh, after piercing him. I mean, they, they whipped him and they did all kinds of things to him. And, you know, much of the studies that we've been covering the last few weeks is really been celebrated around this time frame and like I said this Friday would be the day celebrated that Jesus would go to the cross and and die for us and but Sunday morning was will be when he is risen from the dead God rose him up and many things took place from the point of time where he took his last breath until the day Sunday morning that is celebrated that him being risen from the dead and so in that time frame was when all keys was taken from Satan and delivered to Jesus Christ. And so through this period of time that we're about to celebrate is when we were given the authority on that Sunday morning. It was completed that we were given the authority to be back in the presence of God, to be able to, for Jesus being the bridge that takes us from hell back into the presence of God. And so this is a very significant week that we are celebrating and God has given us something that through this week that we celebrate that we now have the gift to be forgiven of all of our sins. And so when you look at the title that God gave me, it's the power of forgiveness. And it's, that's a beautiful thing because without this thing, you and I will be hell bound, no chance. And no chance I've had by being delivered. No chance, you know, because if, and I, not to give you, not to go too much far back, but you know, before in the old covenant, we had to go with the lamb or ram and all these other things that we had to present on a regular basis for our for, for forgiveness of sins. Well, it had to be done on a regular basis because uh, those things, the blood of those things, did not really complete the whole uh, scenario of forgiveness. It was just the replica of what was to come. And so this new covenant of Jesus Christ, which we're celebrating this week, he paid the final price. He only had to do it one time. And his perfection, uh, living with no sin, gave us the ability to be able to be with Christ. I mean, to be with the, be with the Lord and um, be with uh, our Father. And so I thank God for this week that we celebrate from, like I said, from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday. But there's something that God gave us this, this, this evening that I really must take my time and allow God to do what he needs to do. And if you see the title, once again, it says The Power of Forgiveness. And if you follow me to the 32nd Division of Psalms, we're going to look at some things that God has pointed out to me this evening that will allow us to, for one, give God glory, praise his holy name and be thankful that you and I are in a place where we can ask for forgiveness and it is done and over with. Um, if we truly repent and walk away, it's, it's like we've never done it before. It's like we never sinned. And so 
Um, we're going to go into prayer, and then we're going to go into the reading of the God's Word, verses 1 through 7. And God's will, we'll be able to go back into it, and God will reveal some things that's really going to bless us on the night, that's going to help us understand why this week is so significant, but understanding also why Jesus is so significant, and why God's love is so important, and the ability to walk in God's love. We're going to be looking at all of these things on tonight. And so let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your word on this evening. I thank you, God, for your presence. God, I've asked and I'm asking and just before the masses to show, God, I need you to present this word. I need for you to preach, teach whatever needs to be done. God, send forth for deliverance upon us that will last forever, God. Help us to receive it. Russ, help us to walk in it. And God, help us to think on it. All of these things that you've already given us, God, help us to receive it, understand it, and walk in it. And I thank you, God, for the tools you've given us. I thank you, God, for the wisdom you've poured upon us. I thank you, God, for your knowledge. I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you for every single blessing, God. I thank you for all that you're doing, things that we don't even pay attention to, the fresh air, the beautiful sunlight, the rain, all of these things, God. I thank you for breath. Now, Father, speak in such a way that it reaches and teaches every one of us, God. Everyone, for those that are saved, reach us. For those that aren't saved, reach them. And we thank you for it, God. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go into Psalms, the, 30, uh, the, the 32nd Division of Psalms, verses 1 through 7. And it goes as follows. Verse 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Verse 2. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute inequity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. Verse 3. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all day long. Verse 4. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My utility was turned into the drought of summer. All right. Verse 5. I acknowledged my sin to you in my inequity, and I have not hidden I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. But this calls everyone who is godly should pray to you in a time where you may be found. Surely, in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. Verse 7, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall, shall surround me with songs of deliverance. All right, let's go back into the verse 1. All right, going back into verse 1, we look at the fact that, here we go. It says, blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, look, what this verse is saying, which reaches to every one of us, actually it reaches to all creation. But for those that have already accepted and understand what it means to be forgiven, to first you got to understand that, that you we walk in sin. For those that have not accepted Jesus Christ, everything we do is in sin. Okay? Because the truth of the matter is our natural man, our natural uh, uh, thoughts, our natural habits, they're sinful. Okay? Because without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, the only thing we can follow is what we feel. And most, the majority of the time, our feelings is supported by fleshly behavior. Uh, you make me mad, now I want to act out and make you regret it. Uh, if I feel like I need something and you got it, we don't have anything. This is just examples, y'all. If, if, if you got something I feel like I want it, uh, as, as a person that is not saved without the Holy Spirit, I don't know anything other than to take it or covet it, meaning I wish for it, I want it, you shouldn't have it, let me have it. All of these things are nature of sin. And so you have to understand without the, Jesus Christ being on this side, without the Holy Spirit being on the inside, there is no other way to function. Been there, done that. And so that's why I can relate so easily because I can remember. And the fact is, without a total cleansing of the Holy Spirit, you're still going to have this residue, meaning I'm still going to have thoughts. You know, this is something that we must cover and think about because as children of God, we still have these thoughts to come up. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll, you'll act on them. And you may wonder, then here comes the devil with all this condemnation 
telling you, oh, I thought you was a child of God. Why you do this? Why you do that? Well, guess what? You still have the residue. And so you are making a conscious choice. You have to make a conscious choice on whether to walk it out godly, follow the Holy Spirit, or follow your flesh. So for those that have accepted Christ, we have something to counteract towards the fleshly thought. And so when you look at verse 1, it says, Blessed is he whose transgressions uh, is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, what is transgressions? Transgressions are sins. So basically what we're saying is blessed is, blessed is he whose sins are forgiven, whose sin is covered. And so when you're thinking about that, whose sin, whose sin has been forgiven? Those that have accepted Jesus Christ. Those that have asked the Holy Spirit to come within, which meant you now are not looked at. Once you've asked, hold on, let's go back. Once you've asked God to forgive you of everything, all your sins, past, present, and future, just what Jesus went to the cross for. When we're celebrating this week, when Jesus going to the cross, when he died on that cross, what is celebrated as Friday evening, when he died on that cross, he took the sins of past, present, and future. And so when you go and you, you accept Jesus Christ, you understand that all sins, past, present, and future has been forgiven. And so when you understand that, that as a child of God, that all sins, past, present, and future has been forgiven, then this verse is talking about us. Verse 1, again I reread, blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. We're blessed because you and I now don't have to go for one. Uh, we don't have to walk it out trying to be perfect because there's not one person on earth that is perfect. And so once you understand that, if you're not careful, you try to accept the responsibility of walking it out perfect, which you're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. So now, accepting Jesus Christ means I, my, I've been covered under the blood of Jesus, which means that I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes every day. I'm going to make mistakes, whether mentally or physically. I'm going to make these mistakes. But if I ask God for forgiveness, that means I've been covered. And that's where you and I find ourselves as children of God. Our sins has been covered. It does not mean we can willfully walk out and just smack people upside the head, blah, blah, blah. It just means that we don't have to carry the thoughts of we're going to be punished and sent to hell. Once you've asked God for forgiveness, it's been wiped clean. Okay? All right. Awesome. You're going to see me pick my glasses up from time to time because I just want to check the screen to make sure everything's good to go. Verse 2. It says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute inequity. What is this? And in in Okay, to continue, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Let's stop right there. Verse 2, blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute inequity. That means that you and I as believers, uh, it's just like we never sinned. I said that in verse 1. It, it means he does not, we do not have to walk with the penalty. God, I thank you. We don't have to worry about the penalty of walking in sin. Because for one, once again I say, you and I that have accepted Jesus Christ, we've accepted his blood, we're covered under the blood, which means that when God sees us, he does not see our flaws. He does not see our sins. He sees the blood of his son and he says, they look like me, they're my children, come with me. That's what that means. Without the covering of the blood, then he sees you and he sees your sin. That's why you'll be judged for the things that you've done because you have nothing to cover you to say, uh, uh, there's nothing to cover you to keep you from, for, to keep you looking righteous. Amen. And I prayerfully is broken down, and this is broken down in such a way that you can completely understand it. And that's why I've asked the Holy Spirit at the beginning to teach. Amen. All right, so then the, the, the second part of that, and it says, in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now, check this out. This is a beautiful thing. This is part right here where it takes something for you and I to be consistently working on. Because as I said before, there, there's still, uh, 
if you're not careful, there's going to be some residue from the old man to the new man. And that's why you constantly hear that we have to renew our mind. But see, guess what? You have, um, when you practice doing wrong, then it's placed in your spirit. When you have, you're tempted with the residue, it does not mean that this thing is in your spirit. It just means it's still up here in your brain. Okay? So when you look at verse 2 and it says, in whose spirit there is no deceit. Which means when you're tempted, just because you're tempted, and even if you fall, you don't practice, you do not practice walking in sin. I may have failed twice this week in this era, but I do not practice Walk, falling in this sin I don't fall in this thing Seven days a week uh, Fifteen times every day I don't practice in it I may have failed twice this week I may have failed five times this week But God knows I fought against this thing I just stumbled five So that means It's not in my spirit To walk this thing out When it's in my spirit Then I have a habit of falling it's a part of my DNA. It's a part of my makeup that I fall. I intend on falling. That's when it's in your spirit. Amen? All right, so let's move on to verse 3. It says, when I kept silent. This is powerful, y'all. This is powerful. It says in verse 3, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. What is this saying? When uh, David... David's talking about with Bathsheba here. But you and I can identify with this thing here. When we have unconfessed sins, this is what the effects of unconfessed sin does to the body. It says in verse 3, when I kept silent, mean he never confessed this thing to the Lord. He never asked God for forgiveness, okay? It says, when I kept silent, my bones grew old. Do you understand that sin kills from the inside out. When you have unconfessed sin, it's like poison on the inside. And it kills from the inside out. Many people are sick today. And some of you all remember when you take communion, it is a passage in there that says, um, and I'm going to paraphrase right now. It talks about many become sick and many have even died because they have not confessed their sins, basically. But this is what verse 3 is talking about. Sin on the inside. When we hoard this thing, it said, I refuse to forgive somebody. I refuse to let this thing go. I love this pleasure. I cannot let it go. It's a sickness on the inside. It is like holding poison on the inside, and it will affect you spiritually, and it also, hear me, will affect you naturally. And so many people become sick from the inside because there is unconfessed sin. Look at verse 3. If you don't believe me, read it and ask the Holy Spirit to break it down to you. It says, when I kept solid, my bones grew old. When you think about old bones, you think about fragile. When you think about old bones, you think about sickness. And this all came from hoarding sin. It all came from unconfessed sin. Okay? But it says now, for verse 4, oh, wait a minute, verse 3, the remaining of the verse 3 says, Through my groaning all the day long. So that means there were pains that came from within the body. For having unconfessed sin. Do you realize that when you keep this thing, it's just like you are have now digested sin, and like I said, and you're leaving this poison on the inside to let it take control. And just like anything else, it does. It's like a cancer feeding agent. It poisons from the inside out. But if you look at this, God is telling us how to take the medicine, how to heal from the inside out, confess the sin, ask God for forgiveness, forgive those that have hurt you, ask God to forgive yourself, ask God to help you forgive you for what you've done. Because guess what? As a child of God, God is forgiving you. If you've asked him for forgiveness, this is something powerful. Don't miss this. If you've asked God to forgive you for something you've done wrong, he has forgiven you. For a child of God, your sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. So you do not have to hoard the guilt that came along with the thoughts of that sin. 
who the Son sets free is free indeed, which means that that sin has no weight anymore. If you've accepted Jesus Christ and you believe you're saved, that sin carries absolutely no weight in your life. What you're hearing is the devil trying to get you to accept the weight. When you hear, but remember when, when you're hearing, well, you're supposed to be a child of God, and you're supposed to be this, that's not from God. That's from the devil trying to get you to accept that weight that does not belong to you. He's trying to get you accepted again so that you will suck in the poison once again, the weight of unforgiveness, and then carry it so he, he can kill you. Because come for to, what is it, kill, steal, and destroy. So if you will accept it, then he can get all three done. Kill, steal, and destroy. But God has given us the ability to, he's given us the tools to walk in forgiveness. Amen? Alright, so now, when we look at verse 4, it says, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My futility was turned into the drought of summer. So now, verse 4 is saying, the conviction. God, listen, don't think that you're ever too far from God. Don't think that you're ever too far from God that God can't reach you. When you hear God speaking, he's trying to get you, for one, to get the poison out. He wants for you to live and not die. You remember that? He didn't come, and, and, and as we're celebrating this week, he did not send his son here and to, to walk 33 years out here on earth to have three and a half years of ministry to go through the love, the highs, and the lows of the people that praised him one day and yell crucify him the next day. He didn't do that just so that you and I could walk around with the heavy conviction, excuse me, the heavy condemnation, and they have a conviction with no way out. God didn't do that. He did all of this to make sure that you and I could release the sin. You and I could be forgiven for the sin and make it back in his presence. As when, for one, here on earth by asking for forgiveness, but also when we take our last breath. That's what the purpose of Jesus Christ was. Amen. And is. And so when you look at verse 4, it says, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. David was saying that God was on him day and night trying to get him to ask for forgiveness. Day and night, God was on him trying to get him to ask for forgiveness for sleeping with Bathsheba and getting her husband killed. But God is on us day and night trying to get us to let that thing go. Ask me for forgiveness. If you're struggling in the matter, ask God to help you get through it. Ask him. Like I said before, God is looking for access. That's all he's looking for. If you give him access, he'll help you get beyond and get to and, and, and walk through the issues. He wants to help guide you through the issues, but you gotta give him access. As long as you're walking in pride, say, I got it, I got it, I got it, and then we could be even dumber. I gotta say it that way because that's really what it is. We can be even dumber and say, I don't need God. I got this. No, that's being crazy. Because God has given us the ability to understand that we can't do it. We cannot overcome anything in the spirit, in the spiritual, if we're walking in the natural. And so to walk and say, I can, I can give myself the pleasure of forgiveness. I can give myself the pleasure of peace without including God. That's foolishness. And so God is, has given us the opportunity by accepting his son and realizing, once again, who the son is set free is free indeed. And so when we're looking at four, once again, it says, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My utility was turned into the drought of summer. So now, the drought of summer, you got to think of that being a place of, of no peace. Uh, you got to think of it as being a place of no prosperity. Because the summertime, we need water for vegetation. We need water for life. Okay? Um, a good life is when I'm able to walk to the fruit, to the tree and get fruit. I'm able to go to the grocery store and get the things that come from the process of life. And now there's vegetation. Now there's healthy food to get. That's futility of life. But now, if, if that, but if I look at the fact of no water, if I look at 
the, 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 the non-existence of these things, then that means I have a drought, which means now I don't have the luxuries of having good food. Amen. And so when you look at verse four and you see my fertility was turned into the drought of summer, meaning I didn't have it. All that came from him still holding on to the poison of unforgiveness. Amen. Verse five, it says, check this out. Here comes a complete turn. It says, I acknowledged my sin to you in my iniquity. I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. He got free. The poison left. How did it happen? What was the medication? Do you understand that the medication that you and I take over the counter and the doctor gives is just once again uh, uh, a replication. It's a replica of what God does in the spirit. God still teaches in parables. And so when we take the antidote off from across the, from across the counter, counter, we have to take it multiple, 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 multiple times. But when we accept what God has already given us, it frees us. Amen? It frees us up once and for all. And it says, looking at verse 5, I acknowledged my sin. When I acknowledged my sin to God, that emptied me from the poison that I was carrying of unforgiveness, it emptied me from the poison of that sin. It is, I acknowledge my sin to you in my iniquity I had not hidden. I didn't try to hide it for God. Let me tell you something. God knows all. There is no place, there is no amount of water so deep that he can't see you. There's no amount too high. There is nothing that can keep us from, from God seeing us. There is no escape. You can escape man all the time. But there is no way of escaping God. So you have to come to the fact that God already knew what we did. He already knew what we thought. He already knew all these things. So there is no way of hiding these things from God. Amen? And so once you realize these things and understand that God is bigger than that, then you understand that, hey, I need to get it right with him. And so when we look at this verse, excuse me, uh, my Bible failed. When, I, when you look at this verse, it says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity has not been, I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. When I, when I confessed my sin, God took the punishment away of that sin. He, forgiven, he forgave me. It's just like I never done it. For a child of God, understand we have that ability to just go before him and to say, God, please forgive me. I messed up. I messed up. Forgive me. And then move forward. For those that aren't saved, understand that you are still carrying the penalty of sin. You're still carrying it. And it's not until you accept the blood of Jesus, you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and ask the Holy Spirit to come in. You ask God for forgiveness, and you accept the, accept the Holy Spirit. You accept Jesus, the, 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 the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that Christians all over the world are celebrating this week. Once you accept that, then your sins can be forgiven. Then the penalty of that sin can be wiped off. Once you ask God for forgiveness and you really understand and you really believe and you really understand that you have really bombed and sinned and I need to be forgiven. Once you understand that you messed up, because there's some that still don't understand the difference between I'm a good person and that I sin. So once you understand that, guess what? Good person don't make you holy. I can feed the ducks, I can feed the animals, I can feed the homeless, and if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you're still looked at as a sinner because of our actions and our thoughts. That's the big one right there, our thoughts. I can feed you, I can feed the masses, I can feed the neighborhood, but if I, had, if I have a deceitful, because that's going to that's gonna be a word that we're going to look at. If I have a, oh, verse 2, the last two words, it says, no deceit. If I had deceit in my spirit, then God still looks at me as a sinner because I am now trying to walk this thing out in the flesh to fulfill something that only Jesus Christ could fulfill. All right, so going into verse 6, it says, For this cause, everyone who is godly should pray to you in a time 
where you may be found, surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near me, near him. What is this saying? All right, so while Jesus can be found, while, while there is time, because there, the rapture hasn't come, and even after the period of the rapture, there will be seven years of tribulation. And in that period, many will get saved, those that are left behind. There, there is a period of being saved. You won't be able to die. According to the word of God, during, during the period of trouble, the tribulation, there will, you will not be able to die. You will want to die. I don't plan on being here. I, my intention is to go into rapture because I love God. I'm saved, and I don't intend on backsliding whatsoever. I, I'm going with the Lord. Amen? And so when you understand that it says here, for this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray in a time where he where you may be found. Well, as long as we got breath in our body, we don't know how long we're going to have that breath. So this is the time right now to repent. This is the time where you can be found, where you can inhale and exhale. Because after the fact, because we often think that if the rapture ain't came yet, then I'm good. Well, you don't know when our time will come. Our personal rapture, when God takes us out of here. We don't know that time. It could be two seconds from now. And so while, the, while he can be yet be found, while, while you have the breath in your body, while you have the opportunity to confess your sins and accept Jesus Christ, do it. Amen? Because you don't know how long. And why go through hell here and then die and go, through, go to hell? Amen? Why torment yourself that way? When you can have a piece of joy here and then have a joy everlasting once you leave out of here. These are choices that God is not going to force down our throat. But we do because we're made in his image. We do have the ability to make choices. So it's our choice on what we want to do. Amen? Amen. All right, so now, for verse 6, it says, For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. And it says here, Surely... In a flood of great waters, they shall, come, they shall not come near him. What is that saying? Well, for those that are saved, God will protect you. I know. And if you can look at Psalms 91, which is that's one of the most famous quoted books, of, uh, uh, books in, the, in well, divisions in the book of Psalms, where it talks about 10,000 should fall on the left hand, uh, 1,000 should fall on the right side, 10,000 uh, 10, fall on the left hand, but... Nothing should come near near you or come to your dwelling. You'll find it in the 91st Divisions of Psalms. Uh, but we often think about that. But this is kind of like an echo to that. Where it says, surely in a flood of great waters, they should not come near him. For those that are saved, I know that we'll see things come our way. I'm going to have to put them back down. I know that we'll see things happening around us. And yes, there are things that will happen to us as well. But... Because of Jesus Christ, these things shall not overtake you. The only way the devil has access to overtake you is if you give him that access. Meaning, you begin to speak things of defeat out of your mouth. You begin to speak and give the devil authority to overtake you. But he is it's not a God-given authority. He does not have the authority to overtake you. But because God get, made us in his image... If we speak it out of our mouth and give him access through our words, our sentences, and say something of, of the things that come out of the flesh, meaning the things that come out of fear, then we've just given him access to come and overtake you because we gave him the spoken access out of our mouth. But as long as we're walking the authority of Jesus Christ, the devil has no access to overtake us. Go back to the book of Job. He had he had been the devil had been going to and fro looking to looking to whom he could devour. Okay? He could not devour any of the children of God because he had that for one, they had not given him access. And so he had to go to God to get access to to mess with Job. And even when he had to go get access, God said, You can do these things, but you cannot take his life. So he had no access. He had no access to take Job, to take Job's life. But if he, that's why he kept trying to get Job to curse God and die. And he used his wife to try to penetrate that sentence into Job 
to try to give him the, uh, to try to release the authority to the devil to now have the authority over Job to take his life. The devil was using Job's wife. That's why she consistently said, curse God and die. Because his wife was the closest one to him. And so the devil used that wife to try to get Job to give the devil access through speech. But Job never did. And even when he did uh, begin to curse, he, began, he asked God for forgiveness. Okay, so now, going back to verse 6, and it says, Surely the flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. God has given us the understanding that the things may come, but you will not be overtaken. Do not walk in fear, but walk in faith, and know these things shall not overtake you. All right? Verse 7. And it says, you are, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. As a child of God, these things have been promised to us. God is our refuge. He's our hiding place. Look at verse 9, uh, again, the 91st division of Psalms where it consistently talks about that. Well, he is our refuge. He's our hiding place. God is our hiding place. Under his wings shall we be protected. As a child of God, the Holy Spirit is on the inside. God knows who's his, who is his. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. If you got it in you, God knows that's me. That's right there. He looks and says, wait a minute, that's a portion of me in him. He's mine. I'm not going to let nothing happen to him. Amen? I'm not going to let nothing happen to him. And so when you look at verse 7, when it says, you are my hiding place. God, you are my hiding place. You're my refuge. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall keep me from allowing this thing to completely overtake me. That is your promise. This is not something I got to hope in. This is not something that I got to conjure up. This is your promise, God. And so I must walk and understand that this is your promise and you don't lie. You don't have the ability to lie, God. You don't have the ability to lie. So, devil, you can't tempt me and say, God, I, oh, that, that, that only means if you did this, you did that, blah, blah. Yeah, if I'm a child of God, then I qualify. If I ask God for forgiveness for the sins of, I qualified. There's no other qualification except be a child of God and ask God for forgiveness when I, when I screw up. If I've done those things, that means I qualify for being in his safety. And so when it says, you shall preserve me from trouble, you shall surround me. You shall surround me with the songs of deliverance, which means I should, I'm, I'm in a place where his spirit dwells upon me. It's like being in a bubble, and inside of that bubble, it's nothing but the glory of God. As children of God, we walk protected by angels. We walk protected by his promises. As a children of God, we should walk and speak the promises, which means we have the word of God surrounding us wherever we go. And so oftentimes you and I need to often remind ourselves that as children of God, we have been protected by the word of God. We've been protected by the spirit of God. We've been protected by his spirit on the inside. And so we walk with a level of protection around us. Amen. And so we have to consciously think about these things because if you don't, you'll walk in the flesh and begin to fear What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen this evening? Are they calling for a storm? Are they calling for a tornado? Are they calling for a hurricane? Are they calling for a drought? Are they calling for a famine? That has nothing to do with me when I walk in my authority as a child of God. But if I release my authority and speak those things out that contradicts my authority, then I've just given the devil access to hinder me. Amen. If you found yourself doing that, ask God for forgiveness and walk out in the authority as a child of God. Amen. Now, hear me. For those that aren't saved, then understand, yes, you're not safe. Okay, paint another picture. Those things, when, they, when you hear it on the news, that uh, it's a, a, a great loss of life is probably going to be yours. Amen. And the thing about it is, you know, you and I, Understand, no, we're not invincible. We know that there is a day coming that you and I will lose this heartbeat. But for us that are children of God, we know where we're going. So it does not matter. The, listen here. Understand this. Once I realized I had a heartbeat, once I realized that I'm alive, I also realized I must transition. 
But we, for those that are saved, we understand that our transition is just like walking out of one room, walking into another room, where now I have complete victory. But for those that aren't saved, many, many of well, the majority fear death, and then you wake up and you walk into a room where there's hell for eternity. But you don't have to have that as your outcome. God has died. He sent Jesus what we celebrate this week. Jesus went to the cross for all, all mankind, past, present, and future. Not just for the saints of that time frame, but everybody. He went to the cross for everybody. And his desire, God's desire, his blueprint for this death for Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was for all to be saved. But it only depends upon you because he gave those that he created the ability to choose life or death, to choose whether you want to accept Jesus Christ and have eternal life with him or to choose to walk away from this gift of salvation and spend eternity in hell. Those are the two choices. I know new age teaching that there's you can do this and you can do that. But go back to the word of God. That's no new age teaching. The word of God is not new age teaching. It's not. It's the oldest living transition of. Uh, it's the oldest living. Uh, 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 biblical teaching. So understand. New age. If it don't present the word of God. And written like the word of God. It's null and void. There is no middle ground. So, but once you accept Jesus Christ and understand, yes, you will have life, eternity. Once you realize, like I said at the beginning, I was, I, I, I sinned I, without the blood of Jesus. I'm going to hell for eternity. But with the blood of Jesus, I am promised. I am promised. Oh, man. Life eternal with God. Amen. How do I know it's real? That's one of the things that the devil tried to use. Where for those of us that has been walking this thing out, we have prayed about something and God delivered. We have followed the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit led us to victory. We have listened to the eternal voice that was much smarter than us. Because there's three voices talking all the time. You got Satan, which is the flesh. You got the Holy Spirit for those that have accepted Jesus Christ. And then you have your own thoughts. When you hear that voice, that's so much more profound than anything you can conjure up and you follow it. And then there's victory on the end of it. Believe me, it's real. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when you understand that, then that lets you know he's not dead. It's real. So if it's real for my current condition. I can only believe that the promises to come is also real. That's what lets me know it's real. So if you have not made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make a conscious decision right now that I have sinned, I am a sinner, but no longer will I sin. I invite the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. I ask you, God, for forgiveness. I need the Holy Spirit on the inside of me so that I can walk as a brand new creature, as a child of God, so that I can be safe, safe in this life and safe in the life to come. I can be with you. There's many ways that you hear that thing uh, spoken, but that's the most simplest way that in God's way that I can break it down. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ, understand God now wants to take you on a journey that's going to be pleasurable, more pleasurable than anything your flesh will ever ever offer you more pleasurable than anybody else's flesh could ever offer you there will be a place of contentment there will be a place of internal peace that surpass of all understanding that the world cannot give you on this side and then when we transition over it's going to be far better than what you can ever imagine amen let's go into prayer heavenly father i thank you god for this word on this evening I thank you, God, for what you've done by sending your son Jesus here thousands of years ago and that we celebrate on this day, this week, and this weekend. God, I thank you for these things. And I bless your holy name for knowing 
that I'm a child of God. For all of my brothers and sisters that have been saved by your grace, by your mercy, I thank you for it. God, I give you glory, honor, and praise for all of these things. There is not enough speech, there's not enough breath, there's not enough tongue that will be able to glorify you to the way you should be glorified. But all I know is to say, God, I thank you. And I'm going to do my best in, my, in your strength to give you a pleasing lifestyle. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So I yield to your spirit so that you can be glorified in my lifestyle. I thank you for it. Here am I. Here we are. Have your way. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray that you get something and gotten something out of this word on this evening. I pray that you, God has given you all that you need and enough to chew on to seek him for yourself. Don't wait on me. Don't wait for warriors on a mission. Seek him daily. Seek him hourly. Seek him by the minutes. Seek him by the seconds. And allow him to birth something in you. Allow him to grow in you. And let him teach you and lead you down to the paths of victory. Amen. He desires for you to be victorious in every aspect of your life. But especially spiritually. Do not leave that out. I love y'all. God's will. I'll see y'all on Sunday. Enjoy this journey with Jesus Christ, with God, and through the Holy Spirit. Enjoy. That's what it's here for. I love y'all. God's will. I'll catch y'all on Sunday. Walk it out. I don't know what part y'all caught last. I had my glasses on, but prayerfully you got everything you need out on it. Continue to seek God. Walk it out. And seek Him daily. And allow Him to teach you. I love y'all. Have an awesome day.